Let f of x be equal to sine of x. Find the inflection points and the regions of concave up and concave down for f. So to answer our question, we'll need the second derivative. To get the second derivative, we're going to have to go through the first derivative. So while we have the first derivative, we might as well check out things that happen on the graph. So I take my derivative. Derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Cosine of x is the x value in the unit circle. So we'll note, if I'm between minus pi halves and pi halves, cosine of x is positive, our derivative is positive. That means on the graph for sine of x, we'll be increasing. If we take a look at our graph, so we're going from minus pi halves to pi halves, we'll note that is definitely increasing on that region. Now, as I go from pi halves to three pi halves, our cosine is gonna be negative, which means we're gonna be decreasing on that region. So as I go from pi halves to three pi halves, we're definitely decreasing on the graph. Now, we're alternate back and forth. The regions are gonna have length pi. It's just gonna go from increasing to decreasing back to increasing. So that's everything we need to know about our first derivative. Next, we want to take the second derivative. So I'm going to want the derivative of cosine. That's going to be minus sine. Let's take a look at our unit circle. So remember, sine is going to be given by the y value in the unit circle. So if I'm between 0 and pi, the sine is going to be positive so that's gonna mean the derivative is negative. So for sine of x between zero and pi, we're gonna be concave down. So as I go from zero to pi, okay, notice the bowl is facing down, so we are concave down. As I go from pi to two pi, what's gonna happen there? The sine is negative, so minus sine is gonna be positive, so the function of sine of x is gonna be concave up on that region. So we're gonna go from pi to two pi, concave up, so the bowl faces up there, so that definitely pans out for our, our picture. Again, we'll alternate between concave up and concave down. The length of each region is gonna be pi. How about inflection points? So, where do we find our inflection points? For an inflection point, we'll need the first derivative has to exist, so that means there's a tangent line somewhere. It doesn't have to be horizontal, it just has to exist. And then we want to change in concavity. So if I take a look at my boxes, what do we have? I can have changes of concavity at zero, pi, two pi, every multiple of pi. If you note, the slope of the tangent line at those points is gonna be one, minus one, one, so there's gonna be a tangent line that exists at all those points. So the derivative is defined at those points. And note that they're not horizontal tangent lines either. One last interesting fact, if I take the second derivative, it's equal to minus the original function. So f double prime equals minus f. So what does this mean? Well, this says if f gives up a positive value, the second derivative has a negative value. On the picture, I interpret this as saying, if the graph of f is above the x-axis, it's concave down. If it's below the x-axis, it's gonna be concave up. We'll note that's definitely borne out by our picture. So it's just an interesting relation between second derivative and the function.